Welcome back to Crystal One on One. It's nice to have you. We're in a little corner at the Carnival Gardens in Naguru. And today I'm excited because I have Huntington Bujingo joining me. He is the president of the Uganda Comedians Association and also uh, pretty much like the head honcho at Fun Factory. <laughs> Should I say? Try, yeah, try yes. Welcome to Crystal One and One. Nice to meet you. I'm glad to be here, Crystal. It's nice to see you. Know, you. I listened to you for many, many years mm -hmm. on Radio Msanyo, mm -hmm. and I'm glad. Uh, and then you reminded me we've known each other yeah, for like, very long. Time. Yeah, huh? I, I worked with your husband many years oh ago. Oh my goodness! You know, when you, if we talk about how long ago it was, yeah. you guys will know that I am not young. Yeah, <laughs> even me. I just made forty. What? On the top, yeah. Oh my goodness. Uh, yes. So now we should be asking you what yeah. you're drinking for the, the fountain of youth. I mean, really. No, working out, man. I work working out, out quite a lot. Yeah. Oh. And of course, laughing. Laughing. Yeah, yeah. Laughter you know is what? really, I agree. really like. I rarely get stressed. Uh -huh. Very rarely. It's difficult. Oh, okay. Is that your personality? or? Yeah. It's part of my personality, but also what I do. Mm -hmm. But I, uh, it's part, I've been like this. You know, I'm smiling. Even when I'm annoyed, I'll keep smiling, even as. But, but, but but I, that is freaky. <laughs> what do you mean when you're mad? You're like, so you're like, huh? No, okay. Get I'm, out of my sight. Yeah, oh. but when I'm a bit smiley, but then I'm pissed. So okay. it's rare for me to be annoyed. So maybe you're that kind of person, like when you're upset, you just blow up very quickly and then true, true. immediately calm you, down. You've, you've actually summed me up already. Okay. I really, I, um, I don't have enemies. Mm -hmm. I don't have grudges. I don't hold anything because... When you annoy me now, I'll tell you now, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. And you move on. And you move on yeah, and you just, forget I'm about there, it. Forget about it, I just keep moving. Maybe other people, I have enemies that run, but me, personally, <laughs> I don't have it. <laughs> because I'm too open-minded. Okay. And like I speak out my mind almost. It's, mm -hmm. I, 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 my heart is like on my hands. Mm -hmm. So I'll practically tell you anything. That no, I know you speak out. You even yeah. say things and I'm like, <laughs> did you actually yeah. say that? Because I think I just saw your, your tweets regarding the Deputy Speaker yeah. of Parliament. Yeah, man. Talking you know, about bleaching and I was like, what? Did you go there? I, I hate, you know, it's, it's a, a personal problem I have. Mm. Like even when I see someone who has uh, bleached, I cringe. Mm. I, I, like I get shivers in my body. So I detest anyone who bleaches. Uh, I'm sorry. I've been hurt. Some of them have been saying I'm cyberbullying and anything, but I think someone at that office should stop immediately within maybe six months or <laughs> one year. We need to get her actual color because it will be very detrimental to us even when she's out of the country and they say that's the speaker when they see her bleaching. And it's it's, it's you know, crazy. But you know, I had a discussion with a group of young ladies. Okay. okay. Number one, they told me like, Krista, you shouldn't speak because yeah. you are born like that. Yeah. So <laughs> I have zoom. to check myself a bit. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that's a good point. Okay. But I'm like, if you look at the health effects and the fact that, you know, you are actually killing your killing skin, yourself. you yeah. can get skin cancer. But it's like the thing in the world right now. And it's not just here. It's even in Asia. It's huge. They you see there are trends, you know, mm. um, and especially because of social media, many of young people are influenced to do things they don't know indirectly. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the Cardi B's and all those guys are the people promoting those products. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a machine. It's a money-making machine yeah. for those lightening stuff, the injections, the tablets, and quite a lot. Now there's something, it's almost like a drip. Yeah, I, I see them on social media. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. So these guys are making money on our uh, enslaved, enslaved young people. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now it's also go, going to the legislative level. That's why I'm so hard mm. on the deputy speaker. I'm sorry. Yes. But now if you have Because some, she'll be in her she'll face. Be, yeah, yeah. Every, she'll, she'll be on television, newspapers almost every other day. Mm. So she has to practically change, go back to our normal color. Otherwise, you are in a mess. Our more young guys are going to be like doing that stuff. It's, it's a problem. And then cancer, and remember our health system is broken. So mm -hmm. once you start getting those cancers, then it will be a disaster. No, so you're right. You're right. And also the fact, like you said, the enslaved, I mean, the, what we're being told is the right way. I mean, I love now when we look at the natural hair movement. It's kind of just taking back yes, who we really exactly. are. Exactly. Right? That is exactly who we were mm -hmm. hundreds of years ago. So even well, our skin tone. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's pride. This is pride because other people, sorry, not your skin, other people put like uh, silver screens to protect them from the sun. Mm. But our skin is golden. Wherever you go, you can't touch anything. So the people who really don't understand and, you know, they go on bleaching it and mm. you know, it's really pathetic. I know. Yeah, but is. we pray they, 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 they'll get... Uh, but people <laughs> the say freedom of choice. Mm. I see. My body. Yeah, my rules. My, my skin. <laughs> <laughs> my robes. Uh, Okay, that, that we are in a democratic 
society. No, man, that's the world we're living that's in. It's tricky waters to navigate. But as, as parents, um, mm. we should do certain things. Of course, we won't allow other people to like ride our kids in a certain direction they want when we are looking. Yeah. So we just mm -hmm. have to step our feet down and say, you know, this is wrong. We will not allow our daughters, our sons to bleach mm -hmm. when we are keeping quiet, even if a deputy speaker is bleaching. So I will not just let it pass. Yeah, just I'm because going to say we something are. about it. It will be controversial, but I will say about it. And I'm still saying, I have many pictures of her. <laughs> I'm practically going to be on her case like for a month. Are you serious? Yeah, I still have many. It has to stop. It has to stop many. Okay. <laughs> I, I, it's her choice. So but at this level, mm -hmm. she's now like yeah. on the top five people that lead this country. Yeah. So yeah. if we just keep quiet and let it pass. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. So you're that person. When you decide to, to focus on something, you're like, I'm going there. I know. I and know. I'm not going there once. No. <laughs> I go there full heartedly and wholeheartedly. I know happy errors have been coming on my pages doing, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm telling you, guys. Mm -hmm. I respond to some, mm -hmm. like Aisha. Aisha Liba is, 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 is one of them. I respond to her <laughs> and I tell her, man. It's, it's, I'm not against your boss, mm -hmm. but I'm just against the value of what she's doing right now. Mm -hmm. And I have a daughter, I have son, so if I don't say anything, they may think it's right. Because yeah. they go to my pages and read, so when they see daddy's hair, uh -huh. I'm in a way... And this is what daddy children. stands yeah. for. Mm -hmm. So it's not about me alone or they speak alone, it's about my children. So have you always life. been this outspoken? Yeah, I've always been like, like this. Like from way, way, way back? <laughs> like from way, way, Where way back. Where did we grow up? Where were we born? Uh, where, uh, I was born in Namongo, yes, yeah. Okay. Namongo, mm -hmm. Namongo. Uh, my father was a reverend. Uh, a reverend? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Actually, when I tell people that, they, they get a I'm, I'm like, hmm, <laughs> processing. <Yeah. laughs> uh -huh. My father was a reverend uh, in the Church of Uganda. Mm. Uh, he started the church in Namongo. It's called Chihuly, uh, Church of Uganda. Okay. My dad who started it, and actually the school as well. That's where I was born in 1981. Okay, so you grew up there then? Yeah, yeah I grew up uh, up to around uh, six, seven years. That's when I, 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 my mom moved me away from that place because I don't have studied. Oh, why? Wow. Yeah, you know, that time Namongo was like Uganda. You know, every tribe, mm -hmm. was, you know, it was Islam. Mm -hmm. At yeah, that yeah. time it was Islam. Before, they, they... before, the, before the, uh, the project came, before Sebana brought the project. Mm -hmm. So it was Islam. Everyone who was coming to Kampala, could afford accommodation in Namongo. So uh, the Westerners, Northerners, oh, Easterners, mm -hmm. uh, Rwandis, uh, Swa Nubians, and everyone was in Namongo. So it was like an entire Uganda in, one, you know, in a village. Yeah? That's where we are. I speak quite a lot of languages because of that. Really? I speak Swahili, I speak Lusoga, I speak Rutoro, I speak Nyankore, I speak... Because of guys, playing with guys when you But you said you left there at like the age of six. Yeah, you see, I left at seven. Uh -huh. But I used to go, study, and then come back like for a week or two, oh. then go back again. Because my mom said, couldn't, uh, I wouldn't have studied if I stayed in Amongo. Oh. Imagine coming home to a vacation each day, to a place of pure serenity, a place of pure luxury for you to entertain and unwind. At Jakana Heights, dreams come true. Take your pick from spacious one, two, or three bedroom apartments and luxurious four bedroom penthouses built to international standards with fine, exceptional finishing. Located on Konge Hill, Buziga, with incredible views and a fresh breeze from the nearby Lake Victoria. It's a place for your body, soul, and mind mind with a wide array of amenities. Contact us for more information. Jakana Heights, luxury hilltop living. I wouldn't have studied if I studied in Amongo. Okay. Probably I would be a drug lord like some guys there. <laughs> or I would be a border border cyclist or stuff. Mm. But because my mom took me away, I used to go in boarding school. I moved then. I started still in the entire Uganda. Okay. I was in Busoga. Uh huh. I started in uh, Bujiri. So you went to boarding school. Yeah. yeah. Then. P two. You know my mom. Mm. My <laughs> 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 I have a crazy story, Crystal. Uh -huh. <laughs> my mom was a business lady. Okay. Uh, she used to deal in produce. You know, buy uh, like maize, beans, dry cassava. Mm. So she was a seasonal person. She would go where the season was happening, where the maize was. So if it was in Busoga, we would go. Mm -hmm. and camp there. Uh, well, if it was maize, we'd go probably in uh, Fort Potter if she was going to supply and we'd be there. So in Kasese, 
So I used to, we used to move. I used to, I, I'm, I'm her last boy. Mm. So she said, I can't leave this guy behind. If I left him in Namongo, this guy cannot study because these guys will influence him to start taking drugs and everything. Mm -hmm. So everywhere she went, I went. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that's why I, I started in Namalemba. It's in uh, Iganga, Busembatia. Mm -hmm. That's why I did my P7. And after then, I went to Fort Porto, St. Louis College, Chegove. <laughs> so you also moved to Fort Porto? Yeah, so she was working her. there. Okay. She was working. But there, I was in boarding school then. Mm -hmm. But she was working there, and then she would, of course, stay in Kampala. But me, I was in boarding. Okay. I stayed there four years. Mm -hmm. And then after the four years, I came back to Kampala. Okay. And the yes, there was a bit old. I couldn't get spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> she felt, okay, at least yeah, now yeah, we, sure, we yeah, have she, a foundation yeah. that's strong enough. I, I, I was safe then. You know, I always ask people who were in boarding school mm. from the time they were really young, if you would do the same for your children. At, uh, when, uh, not at a younger level like I was, mm -hmm. but when they reach like P7, it's now principal at home. Mm -hmm. uh, when you reach P7, you go in body. Okay. Then from that you go, but uh, from P1 to P6. Why is that? Yes. Why is that? Because um, they're two school, very different schools of thought. There are people who are like, no, we want, my, we want our kids at home, so they grow with our values and da 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 da. And then there are people who are like, no, they must go and learn to be independent. I'm, 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 I come from both schools of thought. Okay. Uh, the values are shared mainly when someone is growing from mm -hmm. uh, zero to around 12 or 11. That is when the actual values are being instilled in someone. Those are the values I still live on to this day. Mm. So what uh, my wife and I agreed is we have these guys instill the values when they're there. They already have the values. When you come or when you meet them, you'll see that mm. ah, these guys are cultured and nurtured. They've been, they've been grown. They mm. haven't grown up on their own. So there, then we now have to let the world, you know, you test the world, a P7 and above. Because we don't want you to over be pampered at home mm. and you think that everything or the world is as soft or as cultured or as organized like home is. Yeah. No, it's different. Because now in boarding, it's about you. It's about your order. It's about how you keep your things. It's about where are your keys. It's about uh, measuring how many spoons of sugar I'll be taking. It's about how do I use my pocket money. It's now the, uh, the life values are coming. Yeah. That is, I got a lot of those values from boarding school. Because mm -hmm. my mom would give me pocket money and then I would start planning for myself. They told me I'll mm -hmm. come back after a month or after. I will not come back. I won't see you the whole time. I won't time. see you the whole time. So I would know that they're giving me 10,000. So now I'll take to have to 50 shillings a day for, to be able to cover me in this. And my sugar has to be like that. So I, I would plan for myself and life hasn't been hard on me. Mm -hmm. Because of many, the because values of learning how to school. plan earlier yes. and how to live with people, sh socialize. Of ah. course, we come from different cultures, or different homes. This one was told this, you are told this. So, how you reconcile? Mm -hmm. You can't do them at home mm -hmm. because these are your siblings, brothers. They will tolerate your bad manners. <laughs> but when you go and meet someone else, <laughs> uh -huh. they will not take your crap. Okay. So, you, in a way, it nurtures you now to see how to live the world. Okay. Yeah. So I asked you if you were outspoken even back then. Yeah. In school, were you made a prefect or were you the one who was always in trouble? I, I was uh, both. Both? Yeah, but I think... How uh, can you be both? They neutralized me because I was very stubborn and very <laughs> outspoken. Okay. Yeah, especially from... Uh, I was not a prefect in my primary mm -hmm. because I was too stubborn. Okay. Too stubborn, too stubborn. Too stubborn. <laughs> I was short, you know, <laughs> you see my height. <laughs> Short, stout, stubborn, everything, <laughs> outspoken with a lot of, eh. mm -hmm. they used to beat me. So uh, I was not a leader then. I was mm -hmm. only a class monitor. Okay. I think in uh, P3. Okay. And after that, still I was I was demoted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was demoted from the, from the from that post because I, I I think. What happened? I think I fought with someone in class. I think there's some there's some chaos I did. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, I you're not going to be the monitor yeah. anymore. And then I didn't. From that, I didn't. Then I resume now being a leader in secondary. Okay. So I was a prefect all through. All through. All through, yeah. I was a sports prefect in St. Louis College, Chegove. Mm. I was also a prefect in uh, Luviria House Prefect, everything. Then at university, I was uh, first the speaker of the School of Performing Arts. Then I was the chairman. Mm -hmm. of, uh, so I was the chairman of Bobby Wine. Yeah, ah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, so... Uh, from that, uh, then I transited into now acting and everything. That's how we formed Front Factory. And I'm so the, the acting never started in school? Uh, and of course, uh, you know, like our studies are, uh, Crystal. Mm -hmm. You never know what you're going to do. Everyone wants you to be a doctor.
This is for you. A touch of class with a dash of glam. This is for those who choose to make a lasting impression with their first impression. This is for his cut, her crown, and the spark in their eyes. They know a little extra is the new normal. Those who turn heads without a heads up. Step into the Glam Icon Salon and unleash the glam in you. Plot 49A Naguru Drive, Kampala, a few meters across the surgery hospital, Naguru. Of course, uh, you know, like our studies are, uh, Christo, mm -hmm. you never know what you're going to do. Everyone wants you to be a doctor, a lawyer. So your parents what did your are mom you, want? Of lawyer, teacher. Those are two because she loved teachers. She wanted me to be a lawyer, a teacher, or a doctor. Mm -hmm. So that that was the dilemma. I used to act. I used to. So act. you used to perform. Yeah, I used to perform. Yeah. Of course, MDD in schools, mm -hmm. and I've always been there. I even have pictures. I mm -hmm. think I've been sharing them even on my own social media. Mm -hmm. So I used to act pretty much, but I never thought that I'll, this would end up like my real profession. Mm -hmm. It was an accident. I just landed there accidentally. How? Um. I vividly remember I just, uh, when we were filling forms, A6, you know those unique things, mm -hmm. where you put the courses, whoa, lo, 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 because of peer pressure, I first put one. <laughs> Is that peer pressure? <laughs> yeah. Many of us feel, because someone I said, I want to do mass comm, uh -huh. journalism, But swasa. even the schools, that I remember even the, that was yeah, peer pressure. The, yeah, the pressure. Mm -hmm. Even the schools will tell you. So I put a law, education, and third, I didn't have an, anything to put. So we went into the scorecards mm -hmm. of UNEB. Based on points, if you get this, they will admit to this. So I saw drama. Uh -huh. Drama had, uh, I think, was next to education, based on the uh, point study. So I just filled in, be, be a drama, accidentally. The fourth, I don't even remember what I filled in. So we fill the forms. Of course, they submit them. We do our uh, USCA exam. Mm -hmm. So we do, after doing, we wait for the results. The results come. We go. I think I had gotten uh, 18 points. Mm -hmm. Um, so we are, we are a gang of friends because we went as a gang to pick our results at school and technically we all had to go to Makerere <laughs> to see who was admitted or what and everything. Mm -hmm. But of course we didn't expect any of us would be admitted because we didn't, usually law they used to admit guys who got 24, mm -hmm. 22 20, or mm -hmm. some, something like that. So we go to Makerere, uh, the school of, uh, the school of uh, humanities now, uh, the uh, social sciences and arts. So, you know, that's where they put the list and everything. Mm -hmm. Of course, I was a short one. The guys I was, I was going where many people crowding, reading. <laughs> so they are reading, 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 reading. Then a guy sees my name. One of the guys I had gone with, mm -hmm. I think it's called Mugisha. He said, Bujingo Huntington, hey, Bakwade, Bakwade, Bakwade. He said, hey, are you sure? Maybe it's another Bujingo Huntington. Like, no, Bujingo Huntington, even index number. They read even the school was uh -huh. So among all of us who had gone, <coughs> I was the only one who, had, who was admitted on government. Out of all of you? All of the guys that were gone, out of my sack of friends that mm -hmm. I've gone with. Mm -hmm. But now the story <laughs> is here. After the guy reading my name, uh -huh. I said, but you have been given another da, da, da. And then the guy went and said, of course, I said, eh, eh, I never caught the drama. <laughs> I know so the one that you had just filled in. So the celebration stopped immediately. Now they started laughing at me, mm. you know, immediately. So they started shelling me immediately. And none of them was admitted, it's only me. So what we said, <coughs> let's go and see where the department of drama is. Okay. After, so we slope down. So everyone is escorting you They're escorting now. me, we're going. But remember, they're laughing at me. They're still laughing. You know, you know we're a bunch of friends who laugh, practice everything we... We, are <coughs> we love our lives and we, we know each other. Mm -hmm. So, so you they tease were, each they other. They were shelling me and teasing me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Her name is Sajaka Hati. We're going to be able to do it. You'll come with your people and you dance for us. You know those things. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to university to dance, yes. <laughs> so mm -hmm. we go to the department. Ah, what we found there was worse. Oh, no. <laughs> we found guys <laughs> actually dancing. <laughs> Outside. And it's always happened outside. <laughs> yeah, outside. No, you know the trees under the uh -huh. mango trees. They were in maximum. Mm, boom, 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 boom. They are dancing. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. They laughed. They teased me. Now it was worse. Mm -hmm. They are laughing. So I was there. 
Musajja gendo joining ever no atanse dago jamu ngato yambale show to get go So I was not happy I was I was out so now You were feeling bad I was heat I was feeling bad I said okay what do I do So now one of them one of my friends had I think a, a relative who was working at the university and knew that uh, you could change to another course if you're in government so if you didn't want the course that you uh, that given you and you had the points to go to another course you, you can switch change. yeah mm -hmm. so now when he told me that i immediately made my decision that i'm going to switch to either social sciences or bachelor of arts in arts or whatever mm -hmm. because i had the points i even went and picked the forms uh -huh. but then when i came back the following day uh, to the department i found a gentleman called dr uh, professor justin and tam susa Okay. He was the head of department mm. at that time. Of, uh, at that time, I was called the music and dance, uh, music, dance and drama department. Mm -hmm. It's so, MDD. Yeah, mm -hmm. MDD, MD department. So I asked him, uh, so what, what will I, what will I become when I when I do this? Hey, he told me practically anything you want. Uh, he told me, me, I'm, I'm an ethno musician. I write music for the world. So he told the man was making money, and no one knew, no one knew him in Uganda. Even up to now, no people don't know him. Then, but he earns quite a lot of money. Really? Yeah, he's an ethno uh, mu mu musicologist. So when international movies are being done, they consult him. You know, what is quiet? It's like an encyclopedia of music, world music. He knows the Battle of Vienna, what where they started and stuff. So the guy blew it in my face and said, "You know what? But Ugandans don't know that the power of the arts or uh, the sectors when you study these things and everything." Mm -hmm. Oh, because like so, you said, even I was saying lawyer, doctor, teacher. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So no one knew. So he took me through like um, a real, real, real internship and deep stuff about the creative arts. And I said, oh, I was going to be misled by my friends. Wow. So I stuck, yeah, yeah, from that day. That's where all the so passion... So he got you on the path then? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like he told me. He told me, this is, this is the course you're doing is more powerful than any course in this university. But because people don't know, and they haven't, like it hasn't come out to the uh, main fold. Mm -hmm. But don't worry, stick, do your thing, you'll tell me. So that's why I start now concentrating on drama, mm -hmm. right? Comedy, then we study. Then, of course, Philip comes in. That time, Luswata, he was uh, a teaching assistant. That time, I think it was like he had finished like three years earlier, three, mm -hmm. four years earlier. Because he first did a diploma, then upgraded and did a BA uh, drama. Then he came. They retained mm -hmm. him as a, a teaching assistant because he had gotten a first class degree. Okay. So now he starts now like um, teaching us, acting, directing, and everything. And that's why he spots me. We had gone for a practical exam in Bali. Mm -hmm. Because people, it's called People's Theatre. Every year, the department takes its students to the people. And you go and, and perform. And you act, you perform, mm -hmm. sing, dance, perform. Like, you know, uh, uh, rural setups like Mbale, we used to go to Mbale, Mbarara, and you perform in the open. They just put a bus in the backdrop, then you start acting for people they can. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good culture. Many of us were cultured and nurtured in, mm -hmm. in those setups and uh, places. Uh, when I was acting, so that's where Philip sees me. Mm -hmm. He said, man, you can, we, can, we can see. Me and my friend are called Tracy Farouk. Accidentally, he's not into the, in the field. He's, he's doing other things. He, he ran away. <laughs> <laughs> so he spots me. And that's where we start, we start comedy. Mm -hmm. uh, we started the uh, theater factory. We started the... Uh, trying to experiment on how to do sketch comedy because we didn't know the format. Mm. When we were at university, we, didn't, we were very unemployable. We didn't want to be employed by the, the legends that were happening, the Abe Muchibis, the uh -huh. Katol Guamas. They, we couldn't fit in their craft. Uh -huh. So you they, had to find your own space. We had to find our own space and mm. our own craft, but we didn't know how and what. But we knew for a fact that we didn't want to do long plays. We didn't want to do plays that would so take... So you wanted to do small skits? Small, huh? small skits, but we didn't have the formula. Okay. So you <laughs> we wanted to do small skits. At Who were you looking at at that time? Like the you know? corporates, because at that time comedy, comedy was uh, Amarula were the only guys who were doing comedy. Whoa. Yeah, but they were doing it in bars and mm. very downscale bars. Mm. Jaja Sinansi, uh, I know Park View. Yeah, I used to go there. I used to watch those guys. <laughs> but you're like, ah, I, mean, I want to do it different. Yeah.